Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Recently I've been painting mountainscapes and I've had a couple of requests for tutorials on them. So this is my first one and I'll be showing you how I painted this mountainscape using Himi gouache. All of the materials I use in this video will be in the description box below for you to refer to. And if you like this video please thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. So I've already taped down my paper which is 300 GSM cold press watercolour paper and as you're about to see I begin by lightly sketching out the basic shapes of the mountains making sure that the pencil strokes are light but not too light so that we can still see what we've sketched out. Next we want to mix blue with white and taking a flat brush proceed to cover the sky area. I'm going to add strokes of watered down white to add a bit of texture to my sky but I personally still like my skies to be quite free and light so I wouldn't worry about adding too much detail. Next, using a round brush, I mix black and white to make a dark grey. We'll use this to block out the darkest parts of the mountain. The lines and shapes that you sketched out earlier will help with this. Don't worry about these parts being too accurate as we're going to go in with a lighter grey after. I personally water my gouache down quite a bit so I can lay down as many layers as I need to, but it's completely up to you. The best thing you could do is find a consistency that you're most comfortable with. slightly darker, adding black as I start to paint the areas on the left because those areas are shadowed. We'll block in a few more areas in the middle also before we move on to our lighter grey. I then add more white to the grey I just used and we'll use this grey to fill in the lighter areas. We want to fill in the gaps with this lighter grey but still leave some areas without paint for the snow. Don't worry if you paint over any dark grey areas as we're just blocking out at the moment. Next we want to mix in some black to make a grey that's quite close to black. Then we're going to take our brush and make crevices on the rock right at the top, leaving gaps in between. You just want to make small strokes in the areas of light grey for rock detailing and then continue to add those darker crevices working our way down the mountain. Using this colour helps add depth to the rocks and gives them a bit of character. Be as free as you want with your brush strokes at this time because these are just the bottom layers. add a little bit more white to lighten that grey and we're going to start on the finer details. I paint over a few of the darkest sections as we go along but not completely, we just want to give a shadow illusion. And then we're going to make small lines in those lighter grey areas. I briefly go back up to the top of the mountain just to paint over the darkest grey but these marks are more like small but loose circular motions rather than lines. We keep this grey and proceed to paint over those darker areas adding more lines and shadowed sections. Another shade of grey, this time a bit warmer. 
You want to add a tiny tinge of the yellow ochre colour and mix until the colour looks similar to what I have on my palette. Then next to it, we'll add white so you have this same warmer grey in both a lighter and darker shade. Then you're going to take the lightest shade of grey we just mixed and you're going to start making those same small, loose circular motions. You don't want to completely cover the darker areas as we're just highlighting the rocks and those darker crevices add that texture to our mountains. Then we'll take the darker shade and make little lines across this area, especially on the lighter areas of the mountains. Another dark grey, just adding black to the cooler shade of the grey on your palette from before. And we're going to define those shadowed areas on the left, but still make sure to leave spaces for the snow. We take that cooler shade of grey again and make small strokes on that darker section, starting at the top left of the mountains and working your way down. This is purely to add texture, so again, don't worry about getting it perfect. to the right side of the mountains, I start by keeping the same grey and filling in and defining a couple of sections. Then we'll take a bit of white and mix that with that lighter shade of warm grey from before, just on the corner for now. We'll use that lightest grey to go in and define the lighter parts of the mountain. Add a bit more white so you have enough paint and then we're going to highlight the very top of the mountain using just small strokes. darkest shade of warm grey on the palette, adding more rock detailing, so you'll want to use those small strokes again. We are now going to make the base colour for our trees at the bottom. Add green, yellow ochre and black until we have a dark earthy green. I switched to a bigger brush to cover this section. While we let that dry, we switch back to our smaller brush and take our lighter shade of grey to start highlighting the left section of our mountains. I switch between the warm shades of grey whilst adding more detail. Feel free to do the same or improvise. Going back to our grey black colour, we're going to add more dark crevices to define the textures of the rocks. I start on the middle section but work my way around the whole mountain. shadowing on the snow, you'll want to take the same blue that we used for the sky earlier, adding white and the greys on our palette. You can experiment with this, but we don't want this blue to be too light as we're going to go in with a really light blue later. We also don't want it to be too dark as the contrast will be a bit strong. So we're going to start with the snow at the top of the mountains and block in small sections close to the rock's edge, the top middle section, and then we're going to work our way over to the left side of the mountains and cover the snow at the bottom. Our tree. 
trees. So we're going to mix green with black, making a very dark green that's quite close to black. Starting on the left, we're going to add in the biggest trees and then we'll go in with our smaller ones. While that layer dries, we're going to mix white with the blue we made earlier for the snow, making that lighter blue and we want it to be quite close to white. So then we're going to highlight those blue shadowed areas with this colour and this is going to make our snow look really realistic. going to fill in the foliage on our trees. Load up your brush with our darkest green and use loose but small strokes to make leaves for the trees, adding branches as we go. We're going to keep the same colour and go over a few of the bottom areas around the trees that are just a bit too light in colour. Then we're going to mix green, yellow and black and start adding colour to our trees. This colour shouldn't be too light because we're going to add a lighter green on top later. We're going to take our dark green colour again and fill in those remaining lighter areas around the trees. Then we're going to mix our light green with a little bit of black. This colour should be a little bit lighter than the previous green we used to add colour to our trees. And then we're going to make small loose lines to add a bit more foliage. Feel free to experiment with different greens at this point. Add a tiny bit of yellow ochre to one of the darker greens just to warm it up a bit and then we're going to use this colour for some of our background trees and our bigger trees. just a little patch of plants and flowers in that left corner so we'll just add some light green here to separate it from the trees and then while that dries we're going to take our darkest green again and go in one more time to just darken those areas around the trees.
now going to mix yellow ochre with light green to make just a warmer shade of that green and then we'll start by highlighting the foliage on the trees on the left and make our way across. Then in a separate section on the palette we'll mix an even lighter green and we'll be going in with small loose strokes just like before but having enough paint on our brush so it doesn't look too watery. As I go along, I mix that warmer green with the lighter green we just made, just so we can add some warmth to the trees. Then we're going to make another warmer shade, mixing in yellow ochre with a bit of light green, but we want this colour to be closer to yellow ochre. So we're going to go between these three shades of green and yellow ochre as we continue to fill in the rest of the foliage. So sorry about the drastic change in lighting, I kept losing daylight as I was filming this. We're just going to take black one more time and just fill in those last few sections that I felt were a little bit too light. Now we're going to mix white with a little bit of brown and a little bit of yellow ochre. So this colour is going to be closer to white. And then we're going to paint in another tree on the left and we want to add a few branches as well. I felt this colour was a little bit light to be used on its own so when adding in another tree I used a colour that was still light but closer to brown and then we're going to add this brown to the first tree to just shadow the trunk and the branches. We're going to take that same brown and just add in little trunks throughout the forest area. very light brown slash white and highlight the other tree. Keeping that same white we want to just add some flowers to that bottom right section and add any other little highlights that we want to add in. So we're almost finished, we're going to just take white to fill in the snow that's left and also fill in a few more rock details but feel free to use whatever grey colours that you've got left on your palette to do this. We're going to go back to our darkest grey and just define our rocks for the last time. 
I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And also my Instagram will be linked below if you'd like to check out any more of my work. Thank you so, so much for watching this video and I'll hopefully see you soon in my next one. Bye!